You've got to go almost a thousand miles in any direction from Alice Springs before you come to another town that's as big. And if you halve that distance, say anywhere within a 500 mile radius, an 800 kilometre radius of Alice Springs is, is Central Australia. And for most of those people, Alice Springs is their, their hub, their main town. And in that location in that area of Central Australia, about half the population are Indigenous people, Aboriginal people, and, and that makes the whole place so different in many ways. I mean, to hear Aboriginal languages being spoken as you walk down the street is almost unique. Um, but it also changes the whole character of the town in that Alice Springs has a, an incredible variety of um, well-educated, socially conscious, socially active people and they're working in health and education and, and law and land management and a whole range of other fields. But they're mostly here because of the Aboriginal people here. And that makes the actual living in Alice Springs just, you've got this enormous pool of great like-minded sort of people that you can you can move in and, and draw your friends from and that's that's amazing there's this community here where these people are motivated to have this different sort of life and I think that's why if you look at the stories of why people come here that's often the story they wanted something else or they're looking for something more, or they weren't just interested in, you know, earning 150 k's and, um, you know, shuffling between work and home. They wanted something else, and they also want to understand Aboriginal people and what it is that's happening there, even if it's just wanting to understand the interface. So all of these things are in place, and then um, I think what happens is that out of that is a whole lot of rich creativity can be created and people can bounce off each other yeah, and feed each other. Dramatic in terms of climate and distance and you get this uh, extraordinary intensity created by those factors. The separation, the distance, the effort and energy required to ever go back to the seaboard and the intensity that comes from living in a community that's so compressed with this by kind of a, a vast space. I find this an extraordinarily creative place and also an extraordinarily stimulating place in terms of both sitting beside um, another culture and being able to learn. I feel like I'm in a constant state of learning living here um, beside the Indigenous culture and on every day I see things I haven't seen before. I think things I haven't thought before. So in a way this it, it feels like it's um, the most incredible place to be living. There's not as much crap up here, you know, like living in the city, you're surrounded by all these straight lines and and billboards and all sorts of imagery and then there's all the hype about movies and this and that and so when you're in here you're just surrounded by the country. And the country is just amazing. It's so powerful. Like I saw that painting the other day at Araluan and there's this tiny little guy, you know, painting away and there's this massive sort of escarpment or something, just like a huge tsunami is about to wipe him away. And that's what it's sort of like. The country is so powerful and, and huge, you know. You can see forever. You can see like all the way back to yesterday and halfway through to tomorrow and, and uh, it's, it's like full of contrast, you know, things are just so massive and huge but it also can be really intimate.
it's the greatest gift to be able to take the time to explore your own inner world. And I think living in the centre does that for us. Being here, I think, forces layers off, off you. You can't hide because it's a small community and you do so quickly end up putting yourself out there. You're visible, you're known, and, and so that forces you to be honest with yourself and with other people. I think that's a really valuable thing. I imagine a place of barriers dropping away and people being able to meet one another person to person and speak out of their different experiences unfettered by all the preconceptions, the restrictions, the anger, the uh, exaggerated sense of the difference between us. My story, not coming out from the mouth or coming out from my heart. Strong. Thinking, what are we gonna do? Well, I believe that if you don't get yourself involved with, you know, with the dreamings or your personal and you know, family's dreamings, you, know, you lose a bit of your culture. So. It's sort of like when you're painting, it's sort of like you're creating that land back again. It's part of our, our own and part of our history. They create these beautiful, vibrant pieces of artwork that just show how much passion and energy they have within them. And, and the rest of the world stands up and notices. I mean, it's very hard to talk about this country without incorporating a white and a black perspective, or at least where they meet. The clash of cultures, if you like, happened relatively recently. I, I am living in a colonial frontier. You know, I think it's forgotten on the East Coast. You know, this is very recently invaded country. An extraordinary crossroads of um, cultures and uh, historical drama. All that trouble with the colonisation of the country, this is where it's all going to be worked out, I think, where reconciliation can take place and, and where people can really see and understand our place in the country. You know, I hope my, my children can grow up in, in a nation where they're entitled to be able to learn from both cultures equally.